How 30 minutes on the elliptical a day helps my head and neck tension. Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. Kate Crawford says, you've mentioned in the past about using an elliptical exercise machine to release shoulder tension. Can you give us some more details about this? How often do you use the elliptical machine for this purpose? Yeah, so... um, yeah, I have like very high um I have very high neck and shoulder tension and I think that there are more than one reason for that and so I don't think it's all about movement. Uh I think part of it is, you know, high baseline anxiety levels, um over excitation, probably something related to gl- uh glutamate GABA balance. And so I'm sure that it is, you know, very much related to other reasons why I have a history of anxiety disorders. Um, And, you know, I think it also relates to uh, the type of life that I live. So I run a business, which is inherently more stressful than having stable income. Um, And so I think those are contributors to muscular tension. And I think uh, maybe I have something genetic along the lines of, my mother having had fibromyalgia, I might share some of the genes that contributed to that, that might independently be contributing to muscle tension. However, I also think that movement is just a basic, uh, basic regulator of muscle tension. Oh, and of course I work on the computer all the time. And so having, um, I mean, just the simple fact that you can imagine if, if you were a hunter gatherer, think about the number of times you would turn your neck this way, this way, this way, this way, this way over the course of the day. You know, I'm thinking that just, I'm trying to snowboard more and I'm realizing like, um, just as a matter of not wanting to get run over by someone behind me, very frequently looking back, um, you know, a lot more than I would in a car, right? In a car, you've got mirrors um, and you do want to like, you know, you do want to actually look out your window and you change lanes. but when I'm snowboarding down a mountain, I actually want to look behind me uh, very frequently and I might be angled in different ways. You know, you can imagine if you were a hunter gatherer, you'd be ducking below, you know, you might have to run sometimes and you might have to duck below branches, jump over one thing, uh, look that way for the thing you're chasing after look that way for the thing that's chasing you. Um, Just sort of normal, natural life, I think involves, a lot of movement through full range of motion of the neck and shoulders in a way that sitting and typing in front of a keyboard uh, in front of a computer puts your head motionless forward, keeping your full attention directly in front of you for hours on end, which I think is extremely unnatural. Um, And so my line of work also biases me towards head and neck tension on that basis alone. So what the elliptical does is doesn't do a whole lot for make you know moving my neck one way or another, but it does a lot for moving my thoracic spine and my shoulders through a pretty defined range of motion. It's not full range of motion like you know like going like this is, but it's a lot of movement through a a considerable uh, amount of that range of motion, and I think it's sufficient to give my thoracic spine and my shoulders a lot of circulation of fluid that nourishes the joints and keeps things moving. Um, And uh, I think the movement is both a matter of directly infusing the joint with fluid, which, um, you know, your joints are not like your muscles, like your muscles are very metabolically active with transporters that will take up what they need from the blood on an as-needed basis, but your joints are much more passively regulated. It's not that they're not metabolically active at all, but they're much more than 
most other tissues, especially the muscle, they're much more a uh, at the mercy of, um, you know, the physical fluid uh, fusion diffusion into the into the joint. So when you move more, you uh, more fluids uh, perfuse the joint, and I think that's very helpful for the joint. And then also, um, I just think that you know if you if you don't move you tend to support not moving and things freeze up. Um, and if you are not moving in a position that is not good, then you will need extra muscular tension to fortify um, those joints and to keep things stable. So for example, having your head very, uh, if your head is like very well positioned over your torso, then um there's not a lot of muscular work that has to be done because one small thing is balancing on top of a larger thing that is balancing on top of an even larger thing in your hips is balancing on top of an even larger thing in your legs. But, um, you know, but if your head is like this stretching forward, then suddenly gravity is trying to pull it down. And these muscles in the back, in the base of your skull, especially the occipitals have to go into overdrive because they're very tiny muscles that should not have to do that work, doing work that should not have to be done. <laughs> that is holding this much larger thing of your head compared to those occipital muscles, holding them up. So a tiny muscle doing huge work of holding something 50 times its size up from gravity compared to um, a large thing like your torso just sitting there having a much smaller thing, your head rest on top of it. You're just having those muscles go thousand times into overdrive. Um, so all these factors are colliding to make not movement in a bad position uh you know, make those muscles are, that are that are, are in that area very very tense. Um, so what the elliptical does is just gets regular movement into those joints. You increase the fluid there, and you um, you know you might be immobilized in a terrible position later, and you can try to work on that separately. But at least now you also have movement, and so like I I feel like. Um, as long as the movement isn't too demanding, like certainly you can do bad movements that involve, you know, lifting something the wrong way and can throw at your back. Sure. But gentle movement on an elliptical is not that strenuous. And if the movement's gentle enough, then I think it almost doesn't matter that you might be in a bad position because uh, you're not staying in it. <laughs> so just even if it's just 30 minutes of time, not staying immobilized in a bad position is itself a tremendous improvement over constant immobilization of one bad posture. Um, but anyway, uh, my experience with this is that 30 minutes on an elliptical, um, three to five days a week cause improvement. Um, five days or more cause very marked improvement. Uh, Three days a week is more like maintenance and below three days a week is, yeah, I would say if I had to simplify it, five days a week, 30 minutes a day on the elliptical causes uh, improvement that just gets better week after week after week. Three days of 30 minutes on the elliptical per week will maintain whatever improvement I've gotten from doing five days a week and less than three days a week will cause regression. Um. So that's that. Hope that helps, Kate. Thank you for your question. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. As a bonus, you also get to participate in monthly private Zoom Q&As with me. You can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code Q&A, spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for a 10% lifetime discount. From now through February or March, whatever it takes to get it done, I will be working full-time on finishing my Vitamins and Minerals 101 book, 
while reserving a portion of my time for my consulting clients. You can pre-order my book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. I will try to respond to comments here when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next episode.